if you tell someone that you're from the U.S. whilst traveling in another country and they respond with, yeah, I, I figured, let's get one thing clear. It is not a compliment. In fact, there are tourists from three nations whose presence is all but universally a scourge on the places that they visit, and they are in order from the worst to only slightly less bad Chinese tourists, British tourists, and American or U.S. tourists. And although there might be a lot of stereotypes that come with that, I would also come to say there are a lot of reasons that those stereotypes are there. And so now that I've safely alienated or pissed off a sizable portion of the world's population, let's talk about how if you are a tourist from the U.S., you can be a pleasant surprise mother places you visit instead of just another bad tourist. Number one, learn at least some of the language and please be quieter. Now I obviously don't mean that you need to attain fluency or even the ability to hold a conversation in every language for every place that you decide to visit. Of the 10 countries that I've been to so far, I can only hold a conversation in the language for four of them, though I do firmly believe the closer you are to fluency, or at least the ability to hold a decent conversation, the more you truly unlock the ability to experience a place and its culture, because culture and language are all but universally an extension of each other. And if you're ever going to consider moving to another country full time, I would say that a willingness to achieve fluency in the language should absolutely be a prerequisite. But I digress, that's not really the point I'm trying to make here. What I really mean though is that there's a handful of phrases and interactions that you can all but be guaranteed to expect no matter what place that you're in. And it would behoove you to try to learn those. And I don't just mean learn a handful of words and phrases, but try to learn the other side of the interaction as well. It can be a really humbling and embarrassing experience to get halfway through ordering your food at a restaurant or checking into your hotel, trying to use some of these phrase with phrases in the language of the place that you're in, only to eventually have to return a question with a blank stare and then immediately experiencing the shame and embarrassment that comes with the person you're having a conversation with all but seamlessly transitioning to your native language in their country because they likely speak at least enough English to get by and you could stand to do them the same service. Here's the thing, even when that happens, the brownie points that you get for having at least made an effort to get as far as you could get in their language will go so far, and it more than makes up for the slightly cumbersome nature of the interaction. Now, because we tend to exude entitlement as people coming from the US speaking English, I wanna get a couple things out of the way. You are an inconvenience to the place that you're in if you, one, cannot speak any of the language at all, and two, your reaction to any and all situations is to proceed to speak louder and more gruffly in English to the person that you're interacting with. Because all that does is communicate that you are frustrated and you think that the person you're communicating with is a simpleton and they should just do better and understand your language. When in reality, you're in their country, you should be expecting yourself and holding yourself to the standard that you hold people to when they come to visit us. And if you're mad about this at all or feel inconvenienced about it, I would encourage you to reflect on the way that you talk about people coming to or moving to the United States and your stance on how they need to understand and know English. Because uh, ipso facto, the same rule applies to you. It is an incredible privilege afforded to us to be able to travel through almost the entire world, especially the major tourist sectors, and reliably be able to encounter people that speak English. This is a comfort that native speakers of effectively every other language on the planet cannot rely on. And we treat it as a given instead of this really unique thing that only is granted to us because our cosmic lottery ticket happened to be signed and dated, this person is to be born in the United States. So stop taking it for granted. Strive to be a more cultured, educated, and open person. And try to return the favor granted to you by nothing other than the fact that you happen to be born in a certain place at a certain time. If you're feeling in need of a cheat sheet for what these interactions are and what you might want to know, here's where I would probably start. Now you memorize that list and I'll... Oh, no, I'll tell you. Number two, stop trying to change the place that you're in. If you're taking the time to visit a place outside of your home country, I would hope that you're treating it as an experience to become familiar with something unfamiliar to you and be allow yourself to be open to the fact that it's different and new and that maybe there's something for you to learn. If you're visiting a place under the pretense that it's going to be the same as home and have all of the same conveniences and similarities, then like, what is the point of leaving your home country at all? The United States is an extraordinarily young country. In a relative sense, we have very few deeply embedded social norms or customs or culture. We have very little history on a global scale, and yet we have this like deeply embedded sense of pride and independence. All of that can dramatically interfere with our ability to understand and appreciate 
another place for what it is. Wherever you go, there are deeply ingrained reasons that it is the way that it is. There are likely hundreds, if not thousands of years of history and culture driving the rhythm of the day to day. And it's not that place's responsibility to cater to your whims or your expectations. It's your responsibility to adjust your behavior and your expectations to the environment that you find yourself in and to be a good guest. I promise you, you don't know better than them. It might not make sense to you and you might not understand it, but guess what? It doesn't have to and nobody cares. Try to understand it anyway. You just might learn something. It just might change you as a person. If you don't like the music of another country, don't expect or ask them to turn it down or change it. See if you can find the beauty in it and dance along anyway. If the country you're in doesn't have a tipping culture, don't leave a tip anyway just because you come from a more wealthy nation. If you don't like the food in another country, don't just try to find the most recognizable chain or the place most full of people who look just like you. Keep trying new things at new places until you find something that you love. There is delicious food everywhere. Look for places that are full of locals, not tourists. And be willing to go try the place that doesn't have an English menu and fumble through the interaction. If you don't like or agree with the rules in another country, whether they're implicit or explicit, it doesn't give you permission to break or ignore them. The behavior you see happening on social media today in some of the most sacred and historical places in the world is absolutely appalling. We're starting to see places like Kyoto and Venice and other like really just phenomenal places ban tourists and it's because that we collectively are ruining it for everyone else and we're doing it for likes and clicks and an unwillingness to recognize and appreciate something different and abide by someone else's rules. Social order is a real thing and just because we don't have it in the United States doesn't mean that that order doesn't matter. It's how things work in other places and it's held together by a shared understanding of the roles and responsibilities that you have as a member of that society and those rules still in some way shape or form apply to you as a guest. And if you stop and try a few of those rules on for size you might just come to appreciate them and wish that we had more of them at home. If you don't think that the culture of the place that you're in is woke or PC enough? Ask more questions and try to understand the history of where they're coming from and why it is the way that they is. No matter how much you kick and scream or come from the perspective of your more enlightened United States perspective, I can promise you you won't be able to change your mind. There is basically nowhere else on earth embroiled in the same degree of culture war that we have here. And you aren't doing anyone any favors by trying to spread that. If you can't respect and appreciate the place that you're in for what it is, your tourism dollars are not a blessing, they're a curse. Number three, take the path less traveled. Now this rule only applies to you if you are able and willing to practice the first two rules. If you can't, just stay at the resorts designed to cater to you and your expectations and walk only on the well-paved tourist roads. If you're open to the myriad possibilities available to someone who's willing to explore a place more deeply and be open to experiencing something outside of their comfort zone, it is by far the most rewarding way to travel, to go see the things and endeavor to explore the things that aren't nearly as common. In the age of Airbnb, TikTok, and Instagram, it's become easier than ever to discover and explore some of the most incredible and beautiful places in the world. It has also never been easier to destroy them. Being absolutely nuts to butts walking through Fushimi Yanari or going to see the Mona Lisa or getting in line to wait to take your picture in a hot spring and then immediately get out so that the next person in line can just take their picture. It's not only unrewarding, it's actively discouraging. And by the time you get through that, you're gonna wonder why am I even here in the first place? You'll think, is this what all the fuss is about? You'll be homesick and distraught and you'll have missed the entire point of travel in the first place. If you're willing to go just a little bit further though, on the back half of Fushimi Yanari is an incredible hike through a bunch of old graveyards and shrines that nobody goes on. The Mona Lisa is, in my opinion, the most underwhelming and overrated piece of art in the Louvre. If you're willing to explore some of the other wings and exhibits though, you'll find art that you want to stare and marvel at for hours. If you go just across the bridge from the Louvre, you might stumble on random art exhibits like this 
Anne Leibowitz photography exhibit that I found or this other like weird crossover French Japanese culture exhibit that I found. And I can all but guarantee within two miles of that hot spring that everyone is just like fiending over getting a picture at, there's a local owned and driven experience full of equally beautiful nature that you could go to that's not going to disrupt the ecosystem and not going to contribute to the problem. And this might all seem rich coming from someone who is trying to make a living off of making videos like this for the internet. But traveling only to collect photos for your feed and your followers is a hollow and empty way to go through life. You won't feel any better off and the place that you're going to will be far worse off. Instead, I encourage you to do anything and everything you can to go and frequent smaller and more locally owned establishments. Hire independent <laughs> independent local tour guides off of their website once you're in the country rather than through Airbnb or one of these other places. This will provide more niche experiences that more genuinely and accurately reflect the culture of the place that you're in. Ask the tour guides while you're out where they like to eat and drink with their friends, not just where they would take their tours. And you can even ask them to hang out with you after the tour if they're free. Some of the best experiences I have ever had traveling are a result of these kind of like after hours tours that I've asked people to go on. On. It's also worth noting that in countries like Mexico and a few other places that are experiencing a lot of foreign investments through Airbnb that most of these places aren't even owned by local people or companies. And so choosing to stay in them is not actively contributing to their economy. It's just contributing back into ours while disrupting theirs and worsening the gentrification problem. So try to stay in locally owned institutions if you can. At the end of the day, the best thing you can do is try to move more slowly quietly and respectfully through a place, seeking to both understand it better and leave it off better than it was when you got there. And also, it's an opportunity to start healing the beliefs and perspectives that people have about tourists from the US, because right now people don't feel good about us. Extra credit number four, reiterate this point, Stop being so damn loud. Put away the selfie sticks and put away your phone. Like, I, I'm just not even gonna explain this one. Experience the world through your own eyes, be considerate of the people around you, and just like allow the world to be what it is instead of another opportunity to collect useless photos that you're never gonna look at again. Being backed by the power of the US dollar and passport is an incredible gift. It is also an incredible responsibility and almost all of us take it for granted. I implore you to use it for good. This is not me saying don't go anywhere. I'm saying go everywhere. Travel as far and wide and deeply as you can, but do it in a way that helps, that teaches you something and that leaves the place that you're in better than you found it. And take some time to learn a language or three, even if it's just a few words. Learn to love a place for what it is instead of what you thought it could, should, or would be. Stop projecting your experience of the world and the lens through which you were raised onto these other places that it doesn't apply to. And spend some time on the roads that haven't quite yet been worn so thin by over-tourism and blatant disrespect. And with that, until next time, folks.